this is Professor Greg Pasternak, and this is the video podcast to introduce the course Field Methods in Hydrology, HYD 151, at the University of California at Davis. You're probably taking this class because, like me, you have an interest in understanding how the environment functions and how human civilization has affected the environment. I mean, we know that we've had a huge effect on the environment in many different ways, and one of them is related to water, and so we need to be able to measure those effects. The world is plagued by many different problems related to water. Some places there's too much of it, some places there's not enough of it. Some places there's just the wrong kind of it, where it's all full of stuff and junk that nobody wants, so we need to get out of it. And you can think of all kinds of specific problems in groundwater and soil physics, uh, river conditions, oceans, coastal interface, I mean, all kinds of issues that involve water. And we have also seen in the society there's a growing political, policy, social understanding of problems related to water. And so that's led to a more congruent call that we need to have hydrological research just to understand how water works as an integrated system uh, in conjunction with the atmospheric system, oceans, and other Earth systems uh, overall. And that means we need to have hydrologists who are leaders in the field who can have the specialization in related to water and the technical aspects of water, but also have an understanding of how water links to other things such as ecology or civil engineering or water policy and other, other complex areas. And really, the goal of this course, Field Methods in Hydrology, is to provide you with a capstone. Because you've heard a lot of theory about water, now you need to get the practical experience um, in how to measure water so that you have the confidence to be able to go out and work as a professional um, in all aspects as a hydrologist. What are the prerequisites for this course? This course is quite different from other courses in hydrology in that it isn't really designed as an overall course that anybody can take. It's really intended for hydrology majors and graduate students in hydro hydrologic sciences or allied disciplines where they anticipate doing some kind of field methods and taking a formal class will give a better understanding of how to do that. But at the undergraduate level, if you're majoring in some more distant thing in water policy or just general environmental science, this is not the right course. Uh, if you're a hydrology major, this is definitely the right course. You should be taking this either in your junior or senior year, hopefully after you've had a few other hydrology courses. And so um, although we'll present some theory in this class, the main emphasis is going to be on very practical skills that you can use in your career. Well, already you're watching a video podcast, and that tells you this course is not going to be like other courses that you're taking. In fact, what we're going to do here is have what is called learning-centered instruction. This is about putting your education in your hands and really recognizing that I can't educate you. I can be a resource that will help you to educate yourself. Now, why, why are we doing this? What is this all about? Well, what we've seen is that when people have looked at the performance of K-12 through education and college education, in which students are involved in passive sitting and listening to a teacher talk at them, even if the teacher is a very gregarious instructor, they're trying to use a lot of materials, they're trying to interact, it still turns out that when somebody isn't engaging their minds actively, then they tend to not learn the material. Um, and it's not enough just to have the materials and you know, passively get it and then like study it later for an exam or something like that. There have been many documented you know, research evaluations that have shown that um, people, the retention after a course is barely better than what the students came in with. You know, maybe like 30 to 50 percent retention of material. So the goal is to be able to shift out of that mode. Now, one way that a, that a traditional education does that is they give you homework assignments. So, okay, we've given you the ideas, now solve these 50 problems. Like, go home, sit quietly, and do this work. Well, the problem with that kind of homework is it's predicated on the notion that you will spend your life working alone. But, in fact, that's not how it works in a career. 
Yes, there are times in your life when you have to just get into a closet and solve a problem and no one else can help you. That is a reality of life. You do need to have that technical foundation. However, far more of the time in your life is going to be spent collaborating with others. This is about education that is collaborative at its heart. Collaboration is not inferior to competition. It can lead to an individual maximizing their educational potential. And that's really the goal here. Um, you're not going to be alone in the rest of your life. You're going to be working for companies or as parts of teams, and so we need to have you involved. And of course, as an instructor, I'm part of your team too to help you along the way. And I think most importantly, uh, even though it's not specific to the content of this class, the more time you spend breaking free of passivity in education and taking control of your own education, it helps you to take control of your own life, of recognizing that you should be doing things on the basis of curiosity, you know, driven, you know, experience. Um, and the more you take the initiative, the more comfortable you become with that until you're a confident leader uh, with the ability of working with others and leading others in that kind of situation. So how do we go about a learning-centered education? Here are the actions you need to take in order to be successful in this class. First, you're going to have to draw an array of informational resources, most of which I'll provide to you, but in this course being a capstone, many students also choose to go out and find additional information. Second, well that's second, right? Take the initiative to find and explore other resources on your own. Uh, question what you're told, you know, like go, go beyond just what is handed to you. Third, you're going to be interacting frequently with other students during in-class activities, but the key here is don't become overly dependent on them. Um, don't try to figure out somebody who you think is smarter or better or harder working or has more time or whatever. You've got to engage and learn the material individually, but you can be facilitated through your collaboration and interaction with others. So a, a, a kind of divide and conquer approach to information in this course is not recommended. Everybody needs to learn from everyone else on the team. But collaboration really does lead to better learning because when you're teaching somebody else, you're learning even better. You have to understand and digest that information in order to teach it. And then finally, I am here to guide you all every step of the way as you're there doing the learning activities. Whereas if you're at home working on homework, you don't have me there as a resource. Uh, but if we do those activities in class and you, you can watch this video and you don't need me to um, you know, be there in order for you to digest this information. So what are the resources that I'm going to provide to you to help you succeed? First, there's going to be the series of video podcasts of which this is the very first one. Uh, in addition to that, I'm providing you with a PDF of the uh, presentation slides so you can have those in full resolution and look at those uh, without necessarily having to like go through the video podcast. Second, there is a textbook for the course. It will provide depth and different perspectives on the lecture topics um, and you know, it will help to supplement that material. I'm not going to be here and say, hey, on page 22 of the textbook, this is what it says. You'll see that in other introductory courses, but at this level, you need to blend the different resources together on your own. Also, there's a supplemental course reader to address topics that either aren't in the textbook or, you know, I think that there's some better information available, then I'm going to provide that to you. Um, and the supplemental course reader is basically a series of PDF files that are available for you. Um, I've got a very content-rich re website at pastornack.ucdavis.edu. Click on Teaching, click on HYD 151, and bookmark that. Um, you can see all the information that's there. And then finally, UCD has its own course-based system. That does change through time. Could be SmartSight or some other learning management system. But that's the place where you go where it's only accessible to people in the class. So that will give you communication tools to see the announcements that I'm posting and other things like that. Um, the PDFs will be there as well. What are the activities that you need to do? So not just conceptually, you know, talk to other students and stuff like that, but the actual things you'll do in this course. The first is 
Yeah, this is a video podcast. I mean, it's essentially still just a lecture because although retention is problematic with lectures, the fact is lectures are the best way to get a lot of information into your ears, eyes, you know, and, and, and brain uh, to some extent. However, we know that retention isn't very good. So one of the ways to help with that is to provide what we call a student response system. That is that there are going to be questions related to each video podcast and you'll be able to go online, um, answer those questions. The questions will be automatically graded. The emphasis in the grading there is more doing the questions, not did you get the answer right or wrong. So I don't want to put the pressure on you to think like, you know, really um, worry about that from a grading perspective. You should have the pressure of like wanting to do a good job and th thinking and learning the material. Um, and so that's the purpose there is like um, doing this video podcast, it isn't fundamentally different from a lecture, but it does have benefits in that you can pause and you can take it in chunks. You can do it anywhere, anytime that works for you. Hopefully somewhere that's quiet and allows you to focus on this. But if you miss class or you're sick or something else, you're not missing this information. You, this information will always be accessible to you. It's accessible online to anyone in the world. So it will always be available. If you're in your career down the line and you want to brush up on something, watch the video podcast. It'll be here for you. So that's the benefits of that. In terms of, of grade performance, my experience based on careful evaluation of student performance and several runs with video podcasts and learning-centered instruction is that uh, tests of the examination of material on a video podcast don't come out much better. Uh, they certainly don't come out worse, but they don't come out much better in it delivered as a video podcast compared to delivered as a lecture. Uh, the reason for that is, you know, there's good students, you know, middle of the road students, and students have a lot of difficulty. And so if somebody doesn't watch the video podcast, they're not going to learn it. Conversely, some students, they're going to just digest information no matter how I deliver it, and so it won't be a problem. So I've seen that the video podcasts are neutral in terms of, of that grade, but where it's not neutral is the in-class activities. And so, for example, in this course, we're going to have two-week mini projects. You're going to be broken up into groups, and each two-week period, you're going to work in class in small teams, and that's going to allow you to gain new technical skills. And it's really in that collaboration in class with the instructor present where you're going to get far more than you would get if you had to do that on your own. And that's where the main benefit is. And that isn't necessarily on an examination, but that's really the skill that you're going to take with you uh, into the future. As part of those many projects, I will be expecting you to write more formal project reports because I want to start preparing for you for your career. And that's what you're going to need to do in the career. We will also have a large whole class project, and that will allow you to experience really large group-based team activity, um, self-guided technical decision making as a whole class, and again, like like synthesizing a large report when you're working with, say, you know, 10 to 30 people, something like that. There will be in-class examinations. They will focus on the scientific literacy you get out of watching the video podcasts and secondarily from, from the, the two-week mini projects. There won't be one on the whole class project though. So overall, there's a variety of activities that you're gonna be doing in this class. The video podcasts still provide a tr traditional format of lecture, but in a way that I think will serve you better. The vast majority of students who've taken courses from me using video podcasts uh, have been satisfied and preferred video podcasts over the in-class lectures. If you have questions and you feel like you're not getting interaction, just write them down. I'm happy to talk to you about them. You can email them to me if you want a quick response, or just we'll talk about it in class. That's, that's great. Or we can talk about it uh, in my office hours, which I also have every week. So there's lots of ways that you can get interaction. I don't think you need it from the lectures, and I think that by having really meaningful in-class activities, focusing on collaboration will give you the best education that I can provide you. Okay, so that's the end of this presentation to introduce the course, and then the next one will begin with the actual substantive material for the course.